the people of the Republic of Kenya in a highly contested presidential election between the Kenya Kwanzaa camp led by the current deputy president, William Ruto, whereas the Azimiola Omoja camp led by former Prime Minister Right Honorable Raila Molo Dinga. A highly contested election that saw William Ruto being elected as president, but his victory was challenged, which led to a number of eight Supreme Court petitions challenging his victory. We know that as of this week, Monday, the Martha Kome led Supreme Court uh, issued or gave out the ruling whereby all the nine issues raised in this petition were quashed and the petition in, in itself dismissed, of course, without costs. So we are here to evaluate what does this mean for Kenya's jurisprudence, but above all, what lessons are there to learn for us as a region. But also we have seen the current president, His Excellency <coughs> Uru Kenyatta, make some unpleasant statements. But also we know that up to now he has not congratulated the winner of this election. Could this somehow affect transition above all? Well, we are here to evaluate that. And I'm joined by a panel of distinguished citizens of this country. That is, is now my honor to introduce to you. On my immediate left is Dr. Sarah Birete, a renowned lawyer, but also the executive director of Center for Constitutional Governance. Dr. Bini, thanks for joining us this afternoon. Thank you, and uh, good afternoon, viewers. Yes, thank you, Sarah. Uh, next to Sarah and um, the other only panelists so far on the show, the rest will join us along the way, is Honorable Abbas Agaba, former member of parliament for Chittagwenda district. Mm -hmm. Honorable Mili, thanks for joining us this afternoon. Yes, uh, thank you for uh, welcoming me here. And uh, uh, good, good, I don't know the evening, my friend, but say hello to the viewers. I'm happy to be here. Kongs on the doctorate also. <laughs> Thank you. The other day I was also given one. Yes. The, the honoraries are good because yeah. the, you are identified because of your contribution to society. society. And oh. the, you are honored. Yeah. Well, I guess <clears> to <throat> us young people that should be inspired. Yes. We should look forward to achieve uh, academic accomplishments. Well, just to kick us off, uh, Dr. Sarah, let me begin with you. There were nine issues raised um, by the petitioners, nine or eight, I'm not sure. And, this all, uh, and, and, and these issues were all squashed. They were all dismissed by the Supreme Court. Is this a peculiar uh, Supreme Court ruling? Or it is, it is normal, it happens. But for nine issues to be raised before the Supreme Court, they're all found to be short of evidence, short of the substantive test. Is it possible? Or there's something peculiar about it? Well, I think it's uh, important to first state that Kenya has come a long way in their democratic struggles. And they are where they are, a place admired by most African citizens yeah. now. And I think other people beyond Africa, out of their consistent and intentional struggles mm -hmm. to improve their democratic space, and especially the participation of the citizens, and making sure that the true will of the people as to who should govern them is respected by mm. all the institutions and actors. The struggles by, by Kenyans were reinforced out of the realization of the 2007 post-election violence and the efforts <coughs> to conclude the new constitution because the process was already on. Mm. And that was done in 2010. The current constitution of Kenya is the third since independence. So they have okay. the 1963 constitution, 1969 constitution, and now the 2010 constitution, which has not been amended. Mm -hmm. And I think that's important for you. <laughs> <laughs> that's important to emphasize yes. <laughs> for, for Ugandans. For all intents and purposes. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Yeah, but because of the concerted efforts, and the, 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 I think they spent like 10 years discussing mm. the new constitution, mm. went for a referendum, you know, discussed the final text. So I think amending the constitutions should not be a casual, yeah. a casual job that people dream about, and because they have the numbers on the table. And, and overturn decisions by the, the, the majority of the population. So out of that and even the independence struggles and the return to multi-party politics in 1992, mm. I, I, I think for me, and why I'm emphasizing on the background, there are three lessons right from the background mm. 
to, for Ugandans to, to learn from. One is the intentional process to build the democracy mm. for everybody, not just a few, uh, and not just <coughs> to say that so long as our party is maneuvering through, mm. then things are okay. The second issue is the return to multi-party politics in, in, in 1992, and looking at the character and system of multipartism that is in Kenya, mm. unlike Uganda. I know most Ugandans think it is funny, because it's <laughs> like every other five years, mm. there is a new alliance. There are new parties on mm. the block. Mm. In Uganda, we have a thinking that I am UPC by blood. I must be UPC. Yeah. I am DP. I am when I am. In, in Kenya, I, 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 and rightly so, politics is about interests. Mm. And there are no permanent friends and permanent enemies. Mm -hmm. So that is also something to learn <coughs> for yeah. Uganda. Because now in Uganda, it's like NRM is a tribe. Mm. We have a, a new kind of sectarianism. NRM, NRM is a tribe. If you are NRM, you are free to demonstrate. Mm. You can protest. You are free of tear gas. You <laughs> are free of bullets. You can campaign. You, mm. But the other people cannot. Mm. Mm. So that is also for me something to learn from the, the nature and practice <coughs> of manipulatism. The, the other issue before we come to the Supreme Court, because the court petition was the climax, mm. the other issue to learn from is the freedom of participation in politics. It, it's important to, for Ugandans to know that Kenya has finished a highly contested, yeah. highly contested presidential general election, yeah. where the margin of victory is just 200,000 and uh, about 150,000. So, yeah. mm. And there is nobody <clears throat> under arrest. There is no tear gas. There is no political actor on bail. Mm. There is no political <laughs> actor on house siege. Because these are the things that characterize Uganda's elections. There is nobody who moved around in a bulletproof. There was no rally that was dispersed. Mm. So there is a conducive mm. environment mm. for Kenyans to participate in their politics at, at all levels. The other issue that stands out for me is the independence of, of institutions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Institutions have proper <coughs> independence right from the constitution with the security of tenure. Like you saw when the chairperson of IABC came under fire. But remove Chebukati, but you can't remove Chebukati <laughs> unless <laughs> you have moved the motion in the parliament. Unless you have instituted a commission to investigate, mm. unless you have given him a right to be heard, mm. and you must justify your reasons mm. to the whole people. Because these heads and, and commissioners in constitutional bodies are appointed through a public process. Yeah. Public participation, public applications, public scrutiny, public approval. And they have a test, a law, or that uh, you have to pass a test of integrity, which is facing turbulence because it's new. Mm. But at least they have it in place. Mm. I know there were people, civil society had the petition of about to more than 500 contenders at all levels that, that should not have been eligible to contest. But their petition in court was not determined before the nominations. Mm. And even today, I was watching the senator's <coughs> race. There was also a protest mm. on the integrity of the contenders. Mm. So they have also moved a bit mm. on that level. There was an attempt by civil society actors to pass a test on finance, campaign finance, mm. monitoring with the threshold. Mm. Parliament then said the bills on campaign finance came late mm. and they could not process them. But the, and I hope the new parliament will process them way on time. Mm. And once they achieve that, then there will be a level, even ahead of some of, on some elements, ahead mm. of the US and other developed democracies. Mm. So Kenya has mm. so many lessons mm. to learn for so many people, not just Everybody. Ugandans. The other key issue that stands out is the freedom and empowerment of non-state actors.
to do their work. In the last elections, other than refusal to accredit to most of the NGOs, even the few that were accredited, we were arrested while observing elections. Arrested for observing elections that we were accredited to do. Mm. So that, that is where Uganda on the other hand, and I know my colleague. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, maybe Dr. that is why then I want to come now to the petition. Yeah. But I think we need no, just, to just just before mm. we advance mm. the petition, mm. you have made a very good comparison mm. between Kenya's uh, political journey vis-a-vis -vis Uganda. Mm. Do you also want to factor in the aspect the twenty-four years of Arab Moi, where they had maybe all these election irregularities, all these undemocratic practices? Do you think Uganda is still so searching? Are we still in the days where Kenya was under Arab Moi, where things were not very clear, the democracy was, you know, so, I would say struggling? So do you think we're still so searching as a country? I think you can rightly say that we are under, if you compare Uganda with Kenya on, at exactly where we are on the timeline, <clears throat> mm. we are under the worst days of Moi. If you are to compare, those are the days you are referring to. Mm. The worst days of Moi, before the citizens pushed back effectively mm. to reinstate term limits and hold Moi slightly accountable mm. and get a, 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 an exit date mm. for, for his leadership. Before that, he had so many excesses, mm. including stage managed accidents including uh, irregularities in elections. Mm. But also to his credit, the, 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 the joke under that time of Moi was that Mo, the Kenyans would mm. vote Moi out of power, but the divisions in oppositions would return him. Because mm. the, the 1969 constitution mm. just wanted simple majority to mm. win. They did not have the 50 plus one. Mm. And in most of those elections, Moi mm. would not even make 40%. Mm. So the larger Kenyans would, the, the votes would Everyone be wanted to scattered be among the opposition. Mm. Moi was also had a small share yeah, yeah. of the vote. Yes. So until when opposition learned to the hardware and united under NAC. Yes. Now the national, the Rainbow Alliance. Rainbow Coalition. Yes. yes. Before that, they used to divide their vote. Okay, just on the Supreme Court, I want to bring in Honorable. Mm, yes. No problem. So, okay. Uh, well, uh, Honorable, you've heard what Doctor said. Mm. She has um, alluded to the fact that we didn't see all these electoral offences. There was no malpractice that was highly registered. Mm. And I want to believe that politicians have a role to play in terms of nurturing a democracy. You've been to the highs of to the highs and lows of mobilizing people and organizing people. Mm. Do you, what, what role do you think politicians have to play in terms of, because we shouldn't focus so much <clears throat> on, the, on, the, on the Supreme Court decision, but rather the entire electoral process mm -hmm. from the, the, the kind of message the politicians were preaching. They were not preaching hate speech, they were preaching, uh, preaching issues. They were saying, can we have a bottom-up approach towards you know, developing the economy? So the role that politicians have to play in building a democracy, what how significant is that role? Thank you. Thank yeah. you very much for uh, the question. I, I was following uh, Sarah's presentation. But of course, also your comments uh, regarding yes, the, the, the Supreme Court yes, decision. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, somehow I'll end up there. I concede on some of the, some of the, the, the issues she raised, uh, although on some others I, I, I will disagree. We, the politician, leaders mm. or politicians must display maturity and uh, maturity is relative. Mm. The Kenyan election is unique, and uh, I am happy it happened, and it has happened, we have been watching. Mm. Uh, Sarah and I, I think, have been following uh, mm. deeply, and uh, I, I was happy to learn that we are following deeply, uh, uh, separately. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you, you know you engage separately, but somehow you converge, yes. uh, finally, because mm. the election is done. Mm. Uh, how? You see, Ke Kenya is unique, and I agree. I, like I said, I consider on some of her points. Mm -hmm. It has gone through a good metamorphosis. Maybe mm. majority of the points. Well, yeah, we shall cumulatively see where we fall. But uh, there has been a, a good political uh, growth curve in mm -hmm. Kenya. Uh, Kenya has witnessed what Uganda has witnessed. Whether we are yearning for it or not is another question. But Kenya has changed from Moi 
Uh, okay, the change from uh, the, the, Jomo Kenyatta. Uh, for, from Jomo Kenyatta, the founding father, to Moi, and had Moi for some time. Mm. Then it changed from Moi to uh, Mike Kibaki. Mike Kibaki. Uh, then Uhuru Kenyatta. Uh, Uhuru Kenyatta, and then now uh, mm. uh, Ruto. Mm. The changes have not been uh, uh, just casual. Uh -huh. There has there has been struggle. Yes, uh, I am sure if uh, President Moi had decided to keep contesting. Mm. It would have been different, like you were saying. Mm. The opposition was would be scattered, and the constitution only required simple majority. You can win with twenty percent, twenty five percent, thirty percent. You are yes, you are the president, but you are the leader of the opposition. In, yeah. in effect, <laughs> because the majority are against you, mm. but the constitution allows that as long as you have uh, the the majority among the minority, you win. Mm. So you are you you get twenty five percent. And the next person you has like 24 or 23. 25 and 24 is 49. Yeah. Then the others can share. You are the president, yes, but you are leading a minority, a minority group. group. Yeah. So you must struggle to make sure that the other people also side with you. But what he, what, uh, what the, the president Moi did is say, ah, please continue with the country next. Mm. However, did he do so voluntarily or there was, there, there was civic pressure? No, he didn't lose election. Mm. So, because he didn't lose the election, mm. we, we credit him mm. for accepting or uh, voluntarily because he didn't go for If, he, if no, it wasn't limits. voluntary, term limit. He served the second and last yeah. term. Oh, okay. When they were instated <clears throat> term limits in the mm. amendment. Okay. Mm. Now, he, he, but he brought somebody, yeah. he fronted someone. Mm. That's why, you see, it's not always automatic. And Kenya has really brought some good lessons for us to learn. Mm. The incumbent fronted. Mm. Uh, Uru uh, Kenyatta. Uru. Mm. And it appears, uh, for whatever circumstances, uh, for whatever uh, reasons he did it, he brought him. Mm. And people rejected him totally. Yeah. So, uh, rejecting him totally, another person came in, uh, Mzee Kibaki. Mm. It appears, after Mzee Kibaki came in, there was another uh, discussion. Mm. That is Kenya, like you were saying. Today you are with this one, tomorrow you are with the It is interest. interest. Mm. You, you form your party, it, it, it gets through. It, it, it's interesting to know. Mm. Mm. So they had discussions and somehow decided to bring back Uhuru to the, uh, to, to the front. Mm. He was deputy prime minister and minister, mm. I think, for finance. For finance. Uh, under Kibaki. Mm. And you know, it's like uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta brought Moi and also Kibaki had served under Moi. Mm. I mean, we have had our own differences, but it is a good time to also assist this young man to, to mm. man up, to become capable to... Uh, I, uh, uh, so somehow he, he, he's in. And uh, uh, meanwhile, Raida, <laughs> Raida Odinga he has been in opposition for a long time. But he teams up with this one against the other one, teams up with this one against the other one. Mm. I can just re relate his teaming up with, with the Ruto. Mm. Against uh, against Kibaki, uh, against Kibaki, against mm. uh, against Kibaki. Mm. But later on, he comes back as the most needed person mm. to make a world president. That's right. So it's, you don't you don't mind changing. Mm. Today, if if I'm found, uh, for example, uh, of course things have changed a bit. Mm. But in the earlier days, if I would be found hobnobbing, say with like Dr. VSG mm. or with the Akena, mm. say, hey, you people, even Abbas has gone. Mm. Hey, how? But <laughs> yeah. I should be free to say hello to Sarah, to say hello to Dr. VSG because mm. I know them. They're even friends. Mm. One time when Muzay uh, Vidangi uh, uh, parted ways, ways with the system, some young people went on radio to insult him. I called them personally and I told them, please, you, you don't have any locus whatsoever to mm. insult an old man of the standing of Bidandi just because he has parted ways with the system. Mm. Where they started from with the president, you don't know. And mm. where they are parted from, you don't know. Mm. You must respect mm. them even when they have different opinions because amongst themselves, they even talk. Mm. So it's, it's, it's been a learning, learning process. But uh, what, the point we are making is that people are together this time, they split the next time. Uhuru comes with the Ruto, they make a very good team, very formidable, and they are in, in power for 10 years. Mm. And when the time came for, when everyone thought who was going to support Ruto for president, he said, oh, he went with Raida. Mm. He went with Raida, surprisingly. Mm. Now, for the second time, an incumbent backed a candidate and he lost. He lost. This, is, this is a very, very big point for us to learn. Mm. I don't know whether in Uganda it can be that the incumbent supports the, another, a candidate and they don't win. Mm. 
Do we have elections? Because no, no, yeah, we do because uh, there, are, there are constituencies mm. where if the president Museveni, the one we have, mm. comes to your constituency and gives an alternative idea about you, mm. it is very unlikely that you win election. There are some few where where side standing with him mm. costs you the election. Can mm. cost you the election. Mm. I know, like in Kampala here and some other areas. <laughs> but outside Kampala, people are yearning. You keep waiting for mm. the day when the president is going to come mm. and say, "Hey, yeah, this he gives you the flag, mm. and this is our person." And then they they go through. It's finished. So uh, the Kenyan election, yes, we have a few things, a number of things to learn from mm. there. Mm. The decision of the Supreme Court is also a very interesting lesson. Mm. Why the Maraga, the Maraga ju ju judiciary, the other time, the Maraga team, uh, uh, Supreme Court, uh, announced an election. Mm. To the surprise, of, the surprise of very many people, mm. the people will not imagine that at, at at that time the an election would be annulled, mm. given the circumstances people had gone through. Mm. Actually, when the election was annulled, Sarah, I think, knows some of these details. The the, the other people who had won, I think, had almost said, "Ah, why why do we put the country at stake just because of an election? Can we have a way we agree?" Mm. Then I said, "No, no, let's go through it again." And, yeah. And, and have have an election. So this time around, there was excitement because it had happened before mm. that an election can be annulled by the Supreme Court. Mm. People went to the Supreme Court with a lot of hope. Mm. They forgot that you must add right yeah. <laughs> to have your hopes. You must build your hopes on a strong foundation mm. to be able to 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 succeed mm. in your petition. Yeah. So I, uh, for those who are uh, lawyers mm. you, who could analyze the yeah. level of evidence given. Some of the some of the things were merely hearsay. Mm. Say this one happened. You see, I, I I was I was I was I was talking to some friends and I was asking really, even when you're a lay person, mm. yes, I'm a lawyer, but assuming you're a lay person, mm. you cook the food, mm. you participate in preparing this meal mm. from uh, the, the 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 ingredients, mm. buying, preparing, cleaning them, making them ready, and making the meal. Now, at the time of serving the meal, actually serving the meal, someone's like, ah, no, no, I'm not part of the, I, I don't agree. In the 11th hour. So if if something did not happen right during mm. the process of serving the meal, we expected you to have disagreed long ago, such that we don't even have the hope. But now mm. people are getting the good scent from the kitchen. Mm. The meal is about to be served and you're like, no. Yeah. That's where I again, I again agree with Sarah, yeah. the independence of the institutions. Yeah. The chairman of the electoral commission stood his ground. Mm. We have been doing this together. Mm. We must complete it together. If you don't feel the national, the, the patriotic obligation to complete it, fine. Mm. It will go up to the end. And mm. the, the court sided with him on that. Yeah. I, I, I was really happy to see some of the new... So when the court announced the election, and two... So when the court uh, 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 dismissed the petition, mm. and two... It was in unison. In mm. oh. There's no, there's no dissenting, uh, the, the dissenting okay. view. Mm. They, were, they all agreed. Of course, another one would say now, if they are seven and four uh, are dismissing the petition, mm. these three, <laughs> if the three uh, are, are in favor, mm. and you know the petition is bringing in a new president, they have another th another five years of these three have another five years of working with the president. They disagreed with. But I don't expect, I didn't expect that it would even be chanted. Mm. So the understanding is that the 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 the, unis, the, the united view mm. in dismissing the petition was really well founded. Okay. Out and uh, thank you very much, Honorable uh, Doctor. Let me just bring <clears> you in. <throat> One factor that has, uh, I think, stood out tall is the level of independence of the judiciary. And if you're to compare it to, <laughs> yes, but I, I think I just for to, to focus first on the judiciary and compare it vis-a-vis uh, -vis Uganda. I I have. I know of the Gerard Karuhanga case that challenged the appointment of a chief justice in acting capacity. Well, the, 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 the constitutional court did not um, object or did not, um, did not overturn the, the, the decision to appoint a chief justice in, in, in acting capacity. Not so long ago, the president has again appointed 16 judges of the high court in acting capacity. So do you think that some of these presidential appointments continuously undermine the independence of the judiciary here in Uganda. Vis-a-vis -vis Uganda's, sorry, vis-a-vis -vis Kenya's process that involves public, uh, public participation, and um, <coughs> it, is, it, is, it is much more open. In Uganda, it appears to be a backdoor activity, and therefore, I think it continuously undermines the independence of the judiciary. So what do you think are some of the tenets that Uganda must adopt to create an independent judicial system so that 
when hearing cases such as as this, they are able to give their opinions with independence and without any interference from the executive. Maybe briefly before I want to talk briefly about the Supreme, the case, the Supreme Court, the Kenyan case. There were eight issues for determination, yeah. but to me, what stood out was where the issues on uh, the transmission and verification of results, okay. the type of technology used, mm -hmm. which I saw myself, and uh, the IEBC, the dissent at uh, the IEBC. Mm. I was specifically looking out for a decision on that. Mm. In this petition, to me, I had one issue, and, and it was that. Mm. The, the conduct on, on whether the, or not their descent the, I, no, no <laughs> I, I didn't mean it would nullify mm -hmm. but I wanted to see the guidance mm -hmm. on how because it's difficult to have seven people agreeing, agreeing. Yeah. but when you have the majority disagreeing actually what the Echebukat worked with the minority mm. so I, I think to me I wanted to see the decision of court on that one. Mm -hmm. How do you guide the court? Mm -hmm. What are the roles of the commissioners? <clears throat> what is expected? Do they have a duty in their announcement of, of, of results? Because many people are saying, no, the constitution says it's a chairman to announce. Mm -hmm. So they are irrelevant. So there were so many contradicting opinions before the court pronounced itself. And then the other issue for me was whether the foreigners mm -hmm. determined the uh, the president for Kenya, uh, which was the allegation of the petitioners. The Venezuela people. Yes, <laughs> I. Like Russia in America. I, I did observe <laughs> elections all around Nairobi. Mm. We, we were just hopping from one polling center to another. Mm. We did not see any contrary thing happening. Mm. From eight to six, we did not see. Only abnormal issue. Mm. We examined the technology used. I took videos of the technology. The automatic tabulation of who has voted. Even those that were identified manually were captured. I was like, okay. Mm. So where did this election go wrong? Mm. And we had the long term, of course, observation reports from our colleagues in Kenya. So I was so much eager. Mm -hmm. See, and I kept saying on on me, I say no, everything is going as per the rule book. Mm. Finally, you would see a perfect, a normal election, election yeah. happening. And uh, given, of course, our Ugandan background, <laughs> some of us it could have been the, the first normal election <laughs> to, to witness, given the way we do things here. <laughs> so one day I had two. Issues that made me uncomfortable really towards mm. announcement. Two. One was the stopping of Azimio agents from the Tari Center. Principals who were accredited to be at Bomas. And the other issue was some local observers were also blocked mm. from accessing a Tari Center. They were accredited. Mm. So I thought that was a bit suspicious. And then, of course, the next day we saw the descent of the commissioners. So we are like, maybe, but how? And they throw to the petition, I kept asking people, how come, as Mio says, <coughs> the election was rigged in the system, mm -hmm. but they cannot point out <laughs> any single polling station. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. at the polling station, that, we um, got 500 votes. And but in the system, uh -huh. it's giving us 400. Nothing. So I was like, okay, so how was this election mm -hmm. rigged? How come you can't say point ABC? So to me, when the scrutiny exercise, or the recount in the 43 polling stations mm. and the inspection of the servers produced nothing tangible in terms of variations, mm -hmm. I knew there was no petition. Mm -hmm. Because if you go to court and say I was rigged, the system was awarding results which didn't happen, and you have no evidence to say Mbasa this happened in Mbasa, Kakamega, yeah. where, what was it? So to so, me... Wait, wait, just just for one minute. One of the lawyers argued it very well, really. When you refer to it as a comedy, when you refer to it as fiction. Mm. You see, you don't go to court without evidence. Yeah. Especially on allegations like those. Mm. Because now, 
if you were cheated or if, if, like you're saying if you got 500 votes and they gave you 50 mm. <laughs> this happened inside one of our primaries mm. <laughs> in NRM. You would get 500 votes in a polling station, but they give you 50. Mm. But locally, would, would, would they would remove them, the they others. Are, they are wherever mm. it goes. Mm. So if you if that happened, you mm. prove it. Mm. And this is really a, 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 a waterproof or a lie-proof mm. system. Mm. What goes in is what you get there. Turns but out. it has been loaded on the public forum, mm. uh, which you can access. But you can't load. Mm. It's only those with, with the rights to, to, uh, to put it in. Yeah. Now, number number two also, there was a there was a lot of uh, argument actually about the action of the commissioners. I was in Kenya uh, mm -hmm. around that time as well, mm -hmm. uh, doing so, do, do, for following the election. Is it that every decision of the commission? Yes, it's it's it's, it's by majority. Decisions of the commission are taken by majority. So, is announcing of the results of the election a decision of the commission that must be by the majority? So the court says the the the, the final the, the 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 winner is is announced at the polling station. Mm. So the commission is a trans a, tra a trans a trans a transitory point mm. for all the results where they accumulated and then final announced. Mm. So I'm sure the commission has thought mm. if they they run away from the chairman, mm. uh -uh, whatever he announces is now and void because mm. they must take a decision as a, a, as a by majority as a commission. Majority, yeah. But they forgot that what they were dealing with was not their decision. Mm. It was a decision of the people already yes. done, already taken, which was in their hands to yes. be transmitted, transmitted to the public, the public <clears throat> order, and to maybe officiate it. Mm. Yes, Sarah. Yeah. So know. when the, yeah, so when evidence was adduced in court, you would do uh, another interesting aspect was the Venezuelans, because it was true mm. they had come to Kenya. Mm. It is true they had fake documents and they could not explain themselves. It was also true mm. that they had state materials in their possession. Mm. So that cast doubt in many people's minds. Yeah. What is it about these Venezuelans? Until when they were deported. Mm. But so when the, the petitioners again referred to them, mm. it was easy for people to connect and say, mm. these guys were here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you see the petition has failed. To, to put, to put to pin, the to put them on, the, the, election. on the scene yeah. of the, uh, the oh, council. Uh -huh, yes, to put them on the scene of the crime and show what, what their role could have been. Could have been. I mean, the, it is true, they were there, like yes. you're saying, they did this. But <laughs> finally, yes. eh, if an accident happened or somebody shot someone and you say Abbas shot him, and Abbas says, ah, I was in Nairobi at that time. You must put him at the scene of the crime, proof, and then, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that's, that's where they. So they're, that point they're, also, everybody, I'm sure, wanted to see mm. what is it finally. The, the court of public opinion. <laughs> yes, no, because they were there. It is something people would do. Mm. What had seen, mm. but later I think the petitioners did not adduce any substantial evidence, evidence for to, <clears throat> to, to warrant notifications, mm. and I think court took the right decision. But also, before I depart from that, the civil society observers had a parallel tabulation center, mm. which produced the same the results, same result. uh -huh. like uh -huh. IABC. And yeah. the purpose of the parallel tabu voter tabulation is to check the consistency mm. of election results. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So for us, from our side, mm. we knew the Electoral Commission announced the, the right true result mm. of the will of the people from <coughs> the systematic voter yeah. check yeah. that we conducted. You and of course, civil society came under attack in Kenya mm. at the time of the petition <coughs> for that tabulation. We mm. even had a debate. Mm. Do we announce? Do we not announce? <laughs> yeah. We said no. We have done this tabulation. Yeah. We didn't you're, do you're, it. You are comfortable with it? Yes, we are comfortable mm. with it. It's a scientific result. Mm. And we use the scientific tested process. Yeah. So we announced. But when the petition started, then social media. There's a time okay. our colleagues in Kenya, Ilog, were under attack. I think for the whole day they were training at the mm. number one yeah. as Moors. So this. <laughs> the the, 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 the get, gets me to that other point where I thought I, I would disagree with Sarah. <laughs> you see, a campaign where the incumbent has a candidate is a very difficult one. There are rallies in Nairobi where Ruto could not address people. They kept changing their time. Even authority, giving the deputy president mm. authority to campaign in a given area. Mm. They, they, they would give them, they would allow them to use the, the venue at 10. Mm. 
Then when they come at ten, it's not available. They call them at four. By four, you come. Few people, <laughs> people have gone. They have mm. been disenfranchised, uh, and and they, they couldn't access the venues in time. But of course, like you are, you are saying, it, but it's something we can do. No, no, there, there was if, if, if the DCI, the 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 the, the, the DCI, the Directorate of Criminal Intelligence, mm. I think was almost abused in the selection, and they they went witch hunting people, causing a lot of chaos. Well, I don't know how the government wants to deal with uh, some of those things that didn't go well. But I think they were almost misused by the system mm. against those who were campaigning. Because the, the, the issues they did, really, that maybe mm. uh, if, if, if they have not been declared by Kenyans, we can let them pass. But mm. they, they were not, they, 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 really, they brought the system to appear uh, uh, sided. Mm. They were witch hunting people. Uh, I can tell you about, the, for example, the, the, the governor now, the governor of Nairobi, Sakaja. Mm. Sakaja. They yeah. witch hunted the Sakaja. The, 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 even, even those who knew about over him. Over the debris. Yes, yes. Over the debris. Those who, yes. those who, yes. those who were close to him, mm. those who were friendly with him, those who were white people's phones were crushed. If actually they came even here in Uganda, mm. the National Council of Education was put under intensive pressure to, to verify the, with the team university and, uh, uh, and even the, the embassy. Mm -hmm. I think, well, largely because of the involvement of the principal, but mm -hmm. now it is history, it is mm -hmm. gone. But there were, there, at a certain point, mm -hmm. almost the institutions of, of government were uh, to be abused mm -hmm. in, in favor of uh, a given candidate. But, mm -hmm. yeah, but when I brief, I may <coughs> comment about uh, Sekaja, is it Sekaja or Sekaja? Johnson Sekaja. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think even Ugandans, on, uh, on their own, we are surprised by the record of obtaining a degree. First of all, when the, the university has mentioned, many Ugandans did not know that the university. But I, I am now referring to a debate mm. on our own platforms. Mm. Without real any intention. Everybody was like, but what university is this? Mm. Two, when you say did he obtained his degree in two months, well, that's that's the idea. Yes, but the, the period. The university g g confirms the degree was there. He studied, yes. attended. He went through the academic due process. Yes, so when the allegation was that <coughs> he got a degree in two months, everybody was like, what kind of degree is that? So yeah. either it was chemical by his opponents <laughs> at the governorial race. <coughs> because I don't think the state <coughs> can have interest in just one individual. Uh, uh, well, so I you think, need to know the details. I, I no, 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 no. The parliament, mm. the, the parliament was one in the same the same constituency in Nairobi. Mm. The Azimio, the actually the Secretary Rambu. General of ODM won the parliamentary race for the, the Langata. Yes. Oh, for Langata, with the yes. biggest number of votes, seven hundred mm. something. People mm. are saying Sakaja got the biggest number of votes, but the parliamentary candidate got the biggest number of votes mm. because so I, I thought it was chemical by his own opponent at the governorial race, <coughs> but maybe let's leave that. Issue. No, the state took over the media. But why one person? Of the, of, no, 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 not even one person. Mm. Even Ruto, Ruto's public publicity in the elections was very minimal because of because the state media houses were mm. all taken over. Even the private, mm. they feared to even pub publish. You see, sir, you are in Uganda here and you keep complaining when the incumbent. Is behind a certain candidate, or is against another candidate. Nobody wants to associate. Say, eh, they, they shouldn't see me associating with this person mm. until when some of those massive rallies that Ruto was making outside Nairobi. But also, honorable, yeah. I think maybe just to uh, address that issue, mm. it could be because um, Nairobi, being Nairobi, being the capital city, it mm. has the largest population in the country. So there, there is definitely going to be much more attention given to it. Just like here in Kampala. Someone who is running to be Lord Mayor of Kampala mm. is, of course, mm. different from that running to the be Lord Mayor of Kampala. Oh, yes. Something like that. So, uh, our I findings. being at the center. Yeah. Our findings point. through observation and media was twofold. Mm. One, you know that Kenyan media owners have always taken positions in elections. Mm. For example, the owner of Citizen TV. Is a radical supporter of Rail. Rail. Regardless of his in state. They would house. never say anything about No, no, no. Uh, yes. So that one has <laughs> supported Raila all through. He's a personal friend of Raila, he's a mm. dyad supporter. Mm. It has nothing to do with who is in state house. Mm. If you go to KTN and others, <clears throat> the private owned media, mm. 
And remember, there is freedom in, in Kenya, media freedom. Nobody will cross you for supporting a candidate of mm -hmm. your choice. So private media has always taken sides in elections. It is not mm -hmm. the first time. That, that's the point I wanted to emphasize. Mm -hmm. And I, I want to highlight the one of citizens because I know citizen owner. Even the one who was boarding his chopper to vote, he said, you, I am boarding my chopper to vote. What do you think? Mm. Why can't you participate in choosing your leader? Are you waiting to complain tomorrow? But he openly supports Raira. Right. So like three consecutive times I've followed him. Mm. So no, in Kenya, nobody will cross a media house for supporting a candidate of their choice. Mm. No. But and I've always <clears throat> done taken sides. Shouldn't that be against the... the so there are, there are broadcasting yeah. standards, of course, for yeah. elections. Yeah. That, as far as coming to that. At the beginning, there were complaints and they were filed with IEBC mm. on biased media coverage by Ruto's campaign. Mm. After they were filed, there was an improvement mm, yes, they were, on uh, coverage. Yeah. Mm. A progressive change. So. Progressive. But also the other element we observed is that then media space became too com commercialized mm. and the people were covered now based on money and the costs were exorbitant. Mm. So also we and need to election. be mindful that this space at times is paid for. Mm. And if we have paid you at 10 million or so for your rally to be covered, the other people will try but, to cover the other yeah. candidates. But are but they matters, have all... matters of public interest? In no. The, especially for, for the, 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 the state media. St yeah. For state, state media, media. Mm. it is different. Mm. But for private-owned media, because private, they can choose how do they, they run? But they had an obligation mm. yes, also to also cover yes. the minimum standards. The minimum to standard. also cover other candidates. It improved after complaints were filed. Mm. Because complaints were filed by three candidates. Uh, Ruto, the other professor, mm. Wajakoye, and the Pastor David, and the yeah, Mawe, who is mm. also an advocate mm. of the High Court. So, but uh, when it comes to the question of independence, independence of, of the, the judiciary, judiciary yeah. <clears throat> our constitution provides for independence of the judiciary, but we are experiencing a case of deep state capture in Uganda. We can say at the beginning, judiciary has some bit of independence and legal room. And with time, the president kept saying, there were two institutions, police and judiciary, that he would really go for. He used to say that uh, UPC, uh, 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 police was opposition for a long time. <laughs> and he said he would deal with it. And what we have now is a fusion of police and the military. military. Maybe that's his strategy of dealing with it. Then also he used to say that he needs cadres in the judiciary, his own cadres in the judiciary. And recently he said, now that we have our cadres in the judiciary. So what does that mean in terms of independence of the judiciary? Mm -hmm. Good enough, our president is always open in mm -hmm. his mischief or other agendas. <laughs> 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 Everything he wants to do, he says. So what does that statement mean, for example, that now mm. the judiciary, we have finished, we have mm. our cadres. Mm. And if you look at the conduct of, uh, like in this, let's look at three presidential petitions in Uganda. The 2001 petition by BCJ, mm -hmm. where two versus three judges, Kanyihamba and the... Uh, Justice, the, uh, may he rest in peace, Mulenga, mm. and dissented. They wanted the elections and fight in 2001. In 2006, I, I think still it was not unanimous. Mm -hmm. And actually, it was difficult. Kanyamba uh, writes in his book how they had to convince Mulenga to make the shift from one place to another with the calls and arrest, he, de he details that encounter. At that election was almost an fight. They, they, they did not have a majority to sustain it until after cajoling the judges, which judges right, uh, have now authored mm -hmm. in their own book. And if you look at now the, the 2026, in Baba's <coughs> petition. 2016. 2016, mm -hmm. sorry. There was a new element of uh, amicus. 
the, mm. the, there were two amicai applications, only one was admitted by Makerere from the academia, the civil society application mm. was not admitted, although the, our election observer report was relied on in that decision. And the good element that the amicus brought in was the recommendations of court, mm. which were not thoroughly implemented. implemented yeah. In 2021, we had the botched uh, presidential petition, which uh, the petitioner withdrew <laughs> after getting information that the chief justice had had a secret meeting with the president who was the resp first respondent. Mm. By then, when we the petitioner said that as a ground for withdrawing, and of course, the animosity in court, which mm. we are all witnessing, the harsh deadlines, the harsh treatment as if you are, you know, the bench would constitute itself as if they are the respondents. The, the team led by Segona used to say that they, they, are, they don't have a conducive environment in court to argue their grounds. And later they withdrew the petition. But the applications that had been processed, the interlocutor applications by court, where Justice Tsachi dissented on, on one, and then we saw the drama <coughs> now unfolding, mm -hmm. and maybe that plays into the statement of the president saying, I have now my cadres in the mm -hmm. judiciary. So you have Justice Tsachi, whose fire was grabbed, she was left, the microphones are disconnected, and the whole world is watching. Mm -hmm. Live! Mm -hmm. And nobody cares about the image of the judiciary, so long as they fulfill the wishes of the master. Okay. And the justice such then was told to deliver a dissenting judgment the next day. To, and then her file was stolen, and she had no judgment <laughs> to deliver. But what she's going through now, I think, and, and many citizens think it is a result of that. The, it, it, she's being a witch hunt. For dissenting, you have your majority, comfortable majority, but even you care about one judge. It is very normal mm. for courts where it is more than one judge to dissent. Mm. We have very few precedents. Globally, mm. mm -hmm. where judges unanimously agree. agree. Mm. Very few. But because one judge out of seven has a, a, a differing view, you must harass them. You must hound them, you must cut their salary, and the Judicial Service Commission is quiet. Mm. Does that conduct speak of an independent judiciary? I don't think so. Yes, and, uh, and uh, Doctor, where is the problem? <clears throat> is it in the legal framework? Is it in the process through which these judges are appointed? Wh where is the lacuna? Because I know that um, the Constitution, I think Article 243, provides for the mode through which judicial officers shall be appointed. And... Prima facie, on the on the face of it, it 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 the, it appears as if the Judicial Service Commission plays an essential role in this process. So, do you think the issue is in the legal framework? Where have we gone wrong? What is Kenya doing to attain an independent judiciary that we are not doing? Is it the law, or is it just excessiveness from the executive? I, I you don't see know. What a, we do? a constitution without faith in the constitution by actors. A constitution without constitutionalism mm. becomes a mere piece of paper, like the President M7 has called it twice on a public rally, that this constitution is a mere piece of paper. And that shows you his intention and attitude mm. towards rule of law mm. and constitutionalism. <clears throat> He's still a man of the gun. He's not a constitutional leader. Honorable. I'm coming, uh, let mm. me conclude, then Honorable comes yeah. in. Because obviously you would disagree. <laughs> but <laughs> one at uh, Nukororo, mm. on a public rally, you say a constitution is a mere piece of paper. Mm. The same constitution bestows dignity and honor on you mm. as a fountain of honor. <clears throat> but a constitution without the spirit of constitutionalism mm. gets reduced to a mere piece of paper.
So we might have, and the Kenyan constitution largely draws from Uganda, but strengthens the loopholes. Mm. So it largely draws from mm. the 1995 constitution before mm. mutilation mm. of term limits and others. Mm. And maybe that's also a reason we need to pick from Kenya. Mm. All offices, all elective offices have term limits, including governors. Mm. You can't run for governorship more than two terms. Mm. So those are some of the elements we need to know that. Why is Kenya where are they are? Mm. And why are we where we are? Good question. And to explore something with mm. Honorable Abbas. Mm. Honorable Abbas, there are scholars of the law who have said that the basic structure doctrine mm. of our constitution has been altered with. That when we tampered with Article 102B, for example, mm. and we removed age limits, mm. or tampered with Article 105 to remove um, term limits, mm. that mm. we altered with the basic structure doctrine of the constitution. And that when we see, for example, abuse of human rights, when we see lack of rule of law, when we see um, um, uh, lack of independence in institutions like the judiciary, it is only as a result of the basic structure <coughs> being altered. Do you think that uh, we find ourselves where we are today, the judiciary lacking its independence, or being questioned there in parliament in itself, at times we have put question marks on whether they are actually independent or not. Do you think that the constitution needs an entire review and that the, 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 the framework in itself is no longer mm. what the 1995, it, 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 is, it, is, it is not the consensus of the 1995 uh, citizens anymore? Well, 1995, uh, 2015, 2025 is about 30 years. Uh, this is 2022, yeah. so we are about 27 years. Uh, from 1995. I am not one of those who think that the constitution is static, honestly speaking. Mm. Uh, the constitution serves the people. It should be a living document. Really, really. It yeah. must be a living document. Uh, when the need to amend arises, mm. what I care about is, is the amendment done in a, a constitutional manner. Mm. Is it done in the legally provided manner? Uh, but I'm not one of those who think that uh, you have a static document uh, that may even have provisions that are no longer as good. Yes, there are countries that have changed once or twice. Mm. The, the Kenyan, if, if assuming Kenya hadn't changed, mm. <clears throat> they wouldn't have the current setting of governance they have. Mm. One time, President Uhuru was in Mombasa. Mm. You know that time, Uhuru and Raira were opposites. Yeah. So Governor Johu asks Uhuru, I mean, your governor Wapa, what mm. are nini? I am the governor of Mombasa here. Mm. What will you do to me? You are the president, yes, but what will you do to me? Mm. Meaning, uniquely, mm. the developing of powers mm. uh, uh, brought in a new, a new sense of governance. Mm. But if the amendment hadn't happened, actually, this current constitution the new had a big... It's not just an amendment. A, they, yes, the new constitution, new constitution had a big, a big backup from they civil society. They retired the old one. Everyone yeah. thought that uh, being uh, civil society oriented is going to fail. They have never seen devolution of power. Mm. But when they devolved powers down, mm. Professor Anyang Nyong came back to Chisumu and became a boss. He stopped mm. yearning for, for presidency at the national level. I think he saw he could make his, his influence better here mm. and uh, make his contribution here. Mm. And others, like she was saying, go mm. governors are taking two terms. Yeah. If and Joe had stood again in, in, mm. in Mombasa, Mombasa, he was mm. doing well, he would have mm. won. Mm. But a new person had to come. Mm. Somehow, yes, an Azimio candidate went through. Of course, I, I had preferred the UDA candidate. Mm. He was, he's a vibrant, he's much better than the one who went through in terms mm. of vibrancy. Mm. But I, it's the choice of the people of Mombasa that uh, the Azimio candidate won and good congratulations to them. Mm. So if, if there had been this uh, thinking that the constitution in order to be effective mm. doesn't have to be changed, it, mm. would be, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be where they are now. For me, because, what I care about is change why, why legally. I ask, why I ask is mm. that the constitution <clears throat> doesn't provide for entrenched provisions. That, yes, uh -huh. yes. That for these ones to amend them, you yes. must go to a referendum. Go a referendum. A very few, but yes. there are some articles that are not out, out, out uh, uh, entrenched. Yes, yes entrenched. Mm. But they are they form the basic structure of the constitution. That whether they are not entrenched or not, mm. amending them should be very rigid. So why were they not entrenched? And and that's why I'm saying that yes. the, that the consensus that was then mm. maybe isn't what is now. Because, because so that, that's very true. I agree yeah. with you. 1995 Uganda is not the 2022 Uganda. Really, it is not. And if tomorrow 
another group of people came to power other than the NRM and they wanted to change the constitution. Mm. I, 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 how did it stop them? If, because if they I see Uganda ask, different. If I may ask, Honorable. Yes, sir. Do we have consensus that Uganda must have a permanent president? Well, permanent? No, no, we don't have the consensus that must have a permanent president. It is the consensus of MPs, maybe. Uh -uh, no. The members of parliament who uh -huh. amended no, that no, provision. No, no. Is there consensus. such consensus? There's, there's no such consensus. Why do you we have, have one? He's elected. <laughs> <laughs> That's who. If you, so uh, uh, has no, he, no, he's elected. <laughs> he presents himself as a candidate yeah. for election and he goes through. How do you stop Arrests or opponents. By the time he's taking <clears throat> oath, his opponents are either under arrest or are on bail. Well, so, mm. some, some few things uh, that may happen <laughs> cannot. He, Cannot, cannot take the whole picture. Yeah. You, you see, it's like saying Uganda is not democratic. No, no, but, no. Uh, but for, oh, honorable, for the benefit is... of the viewers, honorable, yes. if you look at our election characteristic mm. since 2001, when President Museven was faced with a major challenge mm. for the presidency under the 1995 constitution, is it by design that out of every election, and by the time he takes oath, mm. his opponents are either in prison or house arrest or on bail. Is it by design? There is no... And these are different <clears throat> contenders. Uh, true, true, true. There is no timing mm. in which uh, you say by tomorrow or the other day, Abbas shall be in court or shall be in hospital or shall be where. If circumstantially, by the time he's swearing in, his contenders are in... Uh, out on bail, they they must in court. Be. There was an election where Bessie was nominated when he was in South Africa, I think. Oh, in was prison. It? Was, was in South in Africa. Rizira, no. He was an elected in absentia. He was in Rizira on trumped up charges. Well, it's a, it's a, it's a, That's it's a, not court found. It's a legal process. It's That's a judicial what? process. There may be trumped up, but when you go through court, the court process and they find that they have been trumped up, you are free. That's the normal process. Mm. To, uh, uh, actually, for us politicians, mm. the day you put your head in politics, you prepare for two things. Mm. To go to prison and sleep in a police cell. Every politician, mm. even NRM politicians have gone uh, through the same uh, candidates. One, one time, no, one time mm. the Professor Bukenya slept in, 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 he was taken to prison. Mm. He cried. Even Jim he had never imagined. It was not never... an election. That was no, 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 no. I'm, I'm was just making a election. statement mm. that uh, the day you put up your head in politics, just prepare that anything will happen to you. You can go to Brazil, you can sleep in a police cell, and just be prepared. Yeah. But the point I'm making is that I would not personally pass a sweeping statement, yeah. say that Uganda is not democratic. Yeah. Because there is all evidence to show that Uganda is democratic. There are, there are regular elections we go through. The quality of the election is Sarah's question now. Yeah. Is it free and fair? Mm. How far does it go to be free and fair? You mm. get it. Mm. I will ask you the, the, the Trump election in America, whether mm. it was free, free and fair. People have kept saying that uh, Russia had influence in uh, Trump winning presidency. Mm. How, how true it is, we don't, know. we don't know. But somehow there is a guarantee that if you have voted a person, if a person has been voted to power and you don't like them, mm. you tolerate them for five years. Mm. After five years, if they present themselves again, again, go and campaign against them as intensively as you can mm. so that they lose. Mm. If they win, aha, you no longer have to say, mm. you tolerate them. Mm. as they read. Mm. So this, this is where the, the balance is. So you've, the, the judiciary. You've, <clears throat> you've mentioned one tenant mm. of democracy, which is periodic elections. Periodic elections, Go to, yes. go to the second one, respect for human rights. Yes. Go to the third one, um, independence of institutions. I mean, it is, it is democracy is not it's an not event. It is a process. There are several elements that it's a, Yeah, I agree with you. It's a, it's a, 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 your, your dad cannot be good simply because he buys the food. Yeah. He should man up, he should be able to pay the fees, he should be able to show love, mm. to provide time. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a category, it's a combination of mm. a number of things. But you can't also use one thing to say, my dad did not pay my fees and therefore didn't love me. Okay. That's different. Maybe he loved you, but he wasn't able. able. Okay. Now, the, the judiciary in, in, in Uganda, the, 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 the judicial independence is provided for. Yeah. And the, the judiciary largely mm. is independent. What I, what I thought you were going to raise, mm. the, the, what we call influence peddling is different. It's not exactly what it is. Mm. Influence peddling, the example Sarah is giving, are to do with the president. Mm. But is the judiciary just about the president? What about the others down? Mm. The, the election petitions, for example. Mm. When, are there opposition people who are winning election petitions? Yes, yes, yes. Are there NRM people who are losing election petitions? Sure. How does it happen that way? Mm. It's independent. Mm. Otherwise, if it was not independent, 
all NRM people doing the petitions mm. in, 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 in court, yeah. but some are losing, others are winning. Mm. Meaning at least there is, uh, where, we, where we have an issue, and I think Sarah was with you in APRM, or oh, uh, African yes. peer review mechanism provided for yeah. uh, a process to have, uh, I think it was about the electoral commission, to have an electoral commission nominated similar to the one of Kenya. I think Kenya picked it quickly. Mm. You, you have an, uh, an electoral commission nominated through an independent body mm. or through an independent process, such that finally the appointing authority finds either one or two candidates already mm. uh, sorted and mm. then he appoints one. Mm. But Ugandans failed to adopt it. In fact, there was a cry for balance within the commission Mm. Which would, uh, political parties should be represented in the commission mm. in order to ensure that it's, it's independent mm. and therefore issues of different parties are taken care of. Mm. Sometime we had Dr. Chitariko, mm. uh, a DP person in the, in the commission, mm. but I'm sure he wasn't there for DP. Mm. Otherwise, if you, if you have uh, political actors in the commission, you almost get the scenario of Kenya. Mm. If the Kenyan system had been a little looser than it is, it may be if these commissioners were representing parties Everything would have been turned upside down. We, we, yes, I agree with you. It is work in progress to make the judiciary more independent, much stronger, uh, make the judicial officers have uh, uh, a bigger statute of tenure. Mm. Initially, the, the budget of the judiciary was coming through the, the Ministry of Justice. Mm. But now the judiciary accounts to the parliament. Has a vote in parliament. Yes, yes, and they allocate the money to be able to do their work. Mm. So that it's not because they have taken a, a bad decision mm. against the government that the government denies them money. Mm. Yes, some few cases may be, of course the allegations, mm. we may not prove them mm. uh, properly. Uh, uh, for example, uh, Honorable Chagurani's withdraw from the, the, his, his petition mm. that he had, he, he, he had that there had been a conversation, a meeting between the president and the, and the, between the, president and the chief, and justice, chief justice, whether true or not, I don't know, but no, I don't think uh, there's anything that would stop mm. the president from uh, meeting anyone, mm. Of course, if it is the if the petition is ongoing, you'd say maybe. Mm. But even when the president is campaigning, he's the president. Mm. It's, it's a judicial decision also. Mm. When the president comes to Chitagwena and we say you promised he, this church uh, uh, ten millions mm. and you have never given it, mm. he gives it because he's the president. Yes, he's the presidential is a candidate in the election, yeah. but he has not st stood aside mm. as being president. Mm. So it's it's, it's really so true. is there need <clears throat> to review the law to ensure that. During the electoral period, maybe there is a vacuum. We even made, we, we made some proposals while I was still in parliament mm. that in the in the campaigns, for example, mm. during campaigns is when every church has a fundraising, every mosque has a fundraising, every school has a fundraising, everything. Mm. Candidates are running from this school to the other one to this one to, to offer money to give money during campaigns. Mm. This other this other uh, time bar between mm. which you are able to participate in the fundraising and within which you can't give any money for, for the campaigns. Mm. It is short. Mm. It's about a month, a, 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 90 days to the election. To the, I, I don't remember the, the exact quotation in the constitution, mm. but it's short. Mm. Uh, the thinking was, and there was a lot of religious leaders, mm. to stop any possible uh, 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 fundraising, mm. at least six months before the campaigns, mm. before the elections, so that people are free to participate, to... Every, every, every country, every people should have a constitution that serves them. Mm. If the people find it necessary that there should be some amendments, amendments. to harmonize, they should be presented. Mm. I agree with Sarah. Mm. The, the recommendations of the, of the court during the, the, the Amama Tumam petition, Babazi, yeah. uh, it, it was a slow process to have them uh, put, put, into, put, mm. put, put, put in place. It was really slow. Mm. I used to sit on the legal, legal and parliamentary affairs committee. Mm. We put to task the Minister of Justice. When are you bringing this? When are you bringing this? Mm. Sometimes you find people coming up with private members' bill mm. to, to fulfill mm. the, the, the decision of, of, of the court. Yeah. They, they, they can be fast tracked. Mm. This, is, this is, I mean, if, if the, the government can, can fast track them. Yeah. But if the government didn't fast track them, a private members' bill can be originated. And at the point when, it, when it's, or it, 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 it's at, the, at, the, at the floor of parliament, the government can take it up. Mm. When they take it up, they are given stringent timelines mm. within which to report back to Parliament on what they have done. Everything is, 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 is possible. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> thank, uh, thank you very much, uh, Doctor and Honorable. We take a short commercial break. We hope that you are enjoying the Citizen Chat Show. But just keep it tuned onto this conversation because when you blink, trust me, you miss out on something. 
See you shortly after this commercial break. The Citizens Chatroom happens every Friday at 2 p.m. on Civic Space TV online on Facebook and YouTube. We invite you to be part of this conversation. Civic Space TV, freedom always. Well, we'll be back from that short commercial break. We hope that you are enjoying this conversation. We had hoped to be joined by other panelists, but I think that uh, we shall just keep it up with only these two panelists. Well, just to cut back straight to the chase, <clears throat> Dr. Lim, just begin with you. As we wait for the 21 days to elapse before we get the full legal reasoning behind the, the Supreme Court decision, do you think that, do you hold in your opinion that um, the Supreme Court could have deviated from the 2017 David Maraga decision to avoid things like voter apathy? Because you know that if, if in a hypothetical case, this Supreme Court led by Martha Kome had nullified this election, I think in the subsequent elections, Kenyans would have begun to have what happened, that why should I go and vote? After all, there will be a bench of seven individuals who will decide whether our votes matter or not. So do you think that some of the legal reasoning, the racial dissidenda in the Supreme Court decision was trying to factor in the will of the people that we should not create apathy and therefore we must restrain and we must be very strict in terms of admitting evidence, evaluating it, and taking a decision. No, I, I, I hold the contrary view on that. Mm. I think the two regimes of Supreme Court have been dealing with different issues. Okay. If you look at the 2017 Malaga decision, it dealt with issues that expanded the jurisprudence as well as the democratic freedoms of Kenyans mm. in terms of directing the Independent Electoral Boundaries Commission on how to conduct a free, fair, credible, and verifiable election. Mm. The decisions of court were, in our observation of 2017, court were implemented to a 90% extent mm. by the IEBC in preparing mm. this election. So the mistake petitioners did was to go to court with the same assumption <laughs> of 2017. <laughs> And, mm. and I know that uh, senior counsel Rengo uh, at one time was captured in the media saying, this is the easiest petition mm. I have had to prepare for mm. after filing. So they went to court with the same assumption and similar grounds of 2017. Mm. But those grounds were dispensed by court and were, the changes were implemented. Mm. So if you look at the, their arguments, they raised more or less same grounds. Yeah. But IABC had implemented mm. issues that caused the nullification of 2017 election. And they gave accountability. In, in their engagements with the civil society organizations in Kenya, in their engagements with the IABC, Chebukati attended one meeting, international regional meeting where Chebukati gave a speech on, on, on his readiness for elections. Mm. In the April, in April this year, and what was remaining to be done. By then, he, his biggest disappointment was the bills that Parliament rejected out of time, or no, which was the pending tale of implementing other Supreme Court decisions. Mm. And he kept saying, "I don't want court to find the Commission wanting again." on these issues. Mm -hmm. So all their acts, <coughs> they were mindful of the 2017 Team election. Mm -hmm. So Kenya was able to, uh, to have a better electoral experience mm -hmm. because the, the decisions of 2017 rider petition were implemented. Enforced, yeah. So the, but rider legal team went to court with the same mindset. And if you look at uh, Kenyatta's first speech after after the decision of court, he said, how come the court on the same grounds mm -hmm. ruled differently? He actually asked us as yes. a layman. Mm. Yes. <laughs> but you know, he's a layman. He's yeah. not a lawyer. Mm. And, and he, he, he's okay to yeah, yeah, question. Yeah. As a, in his right as a citizen. Really yeah. But also that shows you the independence of courts. Mm -hmm. That the president did not attempt at any single moment mm. to call the chair of the electoral commission, or to call any judge. Yet he had a clear side. 
But that one is not known. No! We don't know who they no! called <laughs> But the judges said they could not speak their phones. And the lawyers were calling them. They said it. Yeah, but I'm sure you had it. I know, I know. I, I yes. Had, but we, but Chabukati, in mm. his affidavit, mm. said the people who called him and met him, he never mentioned the president. He never mentioned. Mm. So you look what? He never interfered with this process. Maybe he had pseudo operators. No. But you see, the, no, no, the people, sure. if you look at Chebukati's disclosure, he, he would be naive to appear If himself, you look okay. at Chebukati's disclosure, mm. even where the, like Tuju was saying, I will, give, I will release the CCTV footage at my home, mm. and then uh, somebody stole his CCTV footage. <laughs> but they were disclosing really what it was about. Mm. In our case, <clears throat> on uh, 21st March, Last year, mm. the newspapers published that the police officer who was manning the CCTV coverage at State House, when the Chief Justice had a secret meeting on the petition, has been fired. <laughs> a secret meeting on the petition? Yes. <laughs> the petition <laughs> has been... No. no, no, no. I'm saying it is a media. I'm no, not saying, saying I saw them. Mm. I'm quoting a public report by media. Nobody refuted it. Mm. Nobody. Not police, not chief justice. It was in daily Monta. It was in all dailies. Mm. Nobody said this is wrong. So what? So it is, it. it is not public information. First, there was an allegation that we don't trust this court because the head has had a secret meeting. I'm withdrawing my petition. We thought it was a mere allegation. Then a few days later, mm. the police officer is fired with a picture of the vehicle written on Chief Justice for the same secret meeting, not refuted by anybody. So I'm quoting it in that capacity. <clears throat> so if you look at that con conduct, it demonstrates the independence of institutions. Mm. Uhuru Kenyatta is complaining like an ordinary citizen, and he's aggrieved. And I saw in his statement, because he's kind of trust, I saw in his, yes, in our case, you would see the army coming in, the police. Court was never under military siege. Our courts here, when mm. politics is involved, mm. military is in close vicinity. Mm. The, the military has, <clears throat> has not got out of the barracks is, at any point. Uh, doctor, mm. is that only as a result of... Uh, the, the foul play by one player, or different players are, 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 are contributing to where we are today as a country. Of course, I'm not crediting any because single even, player. Even the level of civic awareness of the people, I think also needs to be, be evaluated. That if you have a people who are attempting to destroy property, who are threatening to maybe burn tires as well, I think that the state should not just sit down and fold its arms and watch, whereas people are trying to undermine the, the, the peace, and, peace and security of the country. So I think that there are many factors that are not only entirely hinged on the NRM that could contribute to the level of, um, of, 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 of poor electoral democracy dispensation. I, I, I don't remember the terminology in physics, but let me give three examples. When you squeeze a balloon, it bursts. Okay. When you squeeze a boil, it bursts. When you suppress people, mm. extreme tendencies are exhibited. Mm. You can look at the suicide bombers, the culture. I, 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 I participated in these processes with my colleague here. You can look at the extreme tendencies in the <coughs> countries that have experienced the genocide. You can look at the, yes, yeah. extreme acts by people who have experienced the terrorism. When people lose normal ways of expressing themselves, mm. they resort to extreme means. But that doesn't make it right. No, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm not justifying but, it. But, but I'm doctor, saying it is an automatic reaction, doctor, like how Egypt, you press a balloon mm. and it bursts. It is automatic. Doctor. It means you cannot suppress people yeah. forever and you expect them to do that nothing. That is true, that is true. But however, in Egypt, when Austin Mubarak suppressed people, the Muslim Brotherhood found resolve in their mosques. They organized civically. They didn't attempt to cause 
civil unrest or destroy property. So I think that even when a regime has maybe suppressed, in your own words, I think that the level of civic competence can rise above a regime is Martin Luther King said that the means of the oppressed are determined by the oppressor. And I want to borrow that quote mm -hmm. for, 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 <clears throat> to respond to you. Mm. When people go to participate in politics, support candidates of their choice, and some are shot dead like we saw on November 18th and 19th on Kampala streets. Mm -hmm. when, people hold rally, when people go to contest in uh, elections, and you arrest two candidates on nomination day, one at his party offices, Amuliat, another one on his way from nomination venue, Babu Wine. And when you hold a, a campaign election for 60 days, like we had in the last elections, which is strictly two months, mm. 60 days, and you disrupt, we did a pictorial documentation of the last presidential election. Mm. General Mjishamuntu's rallies were disrupted 46 times. And people know General Mjishamuntu as the most peaceful political actor in Uganda. His rallies were disrupted 46 times. Honorable Patrick Amuriat, as a presidential candidate on a, pres on a campaign trail, was arrested 53 times mm. in the 60 days. Bob Wine was campaigning in a bulletproof because of the bullets that would be fired at his rallies, and as well as, uh, I think, the, and uh, Nubi and Eli, both of them were wearing bulletproofs most of the time. Mm. So that is <coughs> the nature of the political environment that people are participating in to choose their leaders. When finally, even after elections, on, on voting day, after announcement of elections, of the results, of the results, Kampara sounds like Kosovo. It's, it's seen like Kosovo. People Soldiers, no! Mm. But you come to town, it is empty. You are alone on the, the people road. Are, people are home. They don't stay in town. It's hard. You, 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 the town, is, people are not in town like you've rightly seen. Mm. But you know the people who occupy town? Soldiers walking with magazines. Some, not just the guns, magazines on their chest. Search for pictures. What is it? I have Taken one of the very extreme opinions that if Uganda is not capable of conducting free and fair elections, as envisaged in the constitution, mm -hmm. our constitution does not say conduct regional elections. Mm -hmm. It is very clear, free and fair elections. Mm -hmm. On three consecutive times, the Supreme Court has concluded that our elections are made by regularities. On all the three petitions. But not sufficient enough. I'm, I'm coming to that. They are irregularities. Mm. Sufficient enough. The constitution does not even envisage uh, the sufficiency. <laughs> because <laughs> because they are not envisage the mouthpiece. Because, 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 because <laughs> there are human errors. <laughs> yes. There are I am, I am coming. Administrative errors. When the constitution Those says errors. conduct fully and fair regular elections, mm. it does not envisage that. Mm. The Constitution, the Supreme Court has confirmed that the, our, our elections are not free and fair by agreeing with irregularities. They only say the irregularities are not substantial enough mm. to annul to warrant an, an, an a presidential election. Yes, but they agree that they are irregularities. The problem <clears throat> we have is that we don't learn. Mm. Same irregularities every election. Same irregularities. If you read those presidential judgments, mm -hmm. same irregularities. So what do we ever learn as a country? Mm. Why can't, like Chebukato was saying, I don't want to return to court on this matter. I don't want to, re I must follow what court ruled. Mm. And indeed, when they brought him back to court, mm. court found that he had learned his lesson. Mm. And he had done better than 2017. Mm. What do we ever learn as a country? I think what we changed was the name of the EC to add in the So, yes. <laughs> no, no, no. So, <laughs> if it's I. It's a much better EC so, than yeah. it has been. But I want also to point yes, out that only one ground uh, that Supreme Court of Kenya agreed with mm. was that the conduct of IABC mm. was wanting as a, as a commission. Mm -hmm. The court agreed with one ground in that of the nine grounds they had highlighted. Mm. That the disagreement in IEBC 
was problematic mm. except it wasn't enough yes. on its own yes to warrant, to warrant. The, they were conducting the a transmission the the the, the lady lady justice don't uh, stop yeah. the transmission exactly the yes. has been so what are they, what are they, the is the, what they exactly. guided and what what improves now the conduct of ibc for kenya is that the cons the commissioners must work in harmony Mm. The only difference is that the constitution points out who to announce. Just the announcement. Mm. But that does not give you autonomy mm. on verifying and final authority. Mm. You can't do it alone. Okay. Mm. Uh, thank you, doctor. Mm. I want to bring in uh, Honorable. Honorable, at the wake of the East African Community Federation, um, at least media has portrayed, or we have seen that the, the NRM has enjoyed a uh, cordial relationship with the current president-elect now, Dr. William Ruto. So do you think that the Ruto presidency, now that the Supreme Court has confirmed his election, mm. do you think it offers a better platform for, this, for, this, for the East African Federation vis-a-vis -vis his counterpart who was heard making statements like, you know, you cannot compare Kenya to other countries like Uganda. <laughs> so do you think the Ruto presidency, now that it is confirmed, <laughs> offers a better platform for East Africa to move forward? Well, uh, I, of course, you see, being a presidential candidate is one, mm. and being a president is another. Mm. I, I had never been very clear about the difference, but I saw Obama the presidential candidate, mm. and I saw Obama the president. Okay. Uh, when you are the president, Ma, you, you do very few things on your own as a person. Mm. There is a system that must guide you on how you operate. I mean, you, have, you may have enemies even in the immediate neighborhood, mm. but you must manage them in a certain way because you have a foreign policy to follow. Yeah. Uh, for sure and for real, I have a lot of faith in uh, President Ruto, and definitely I, I, I really believe that the East African Federation should be able to move faster. Mm. One, he's younger, uh, mm. he's younger, and he gives a lot of hope uh, for the young generation, for, for, the, for the region generally, because even for the old generation, it gives hope. Uh, his cordial, uh, our, uh, Uganda's cordial relations with Kenya, with him, of course he's been around, he's been a deputy president. Mm. Sometime he came and campaigned for President Museveni mm. in this other region, this, uh, in the east. In the east. Where they are, the people are, uh, they crisscross Buko, over the borders. Kwen and Kapchora. Yes. I think he came here sometime and he was awarded a doctorate from McKinney or something. University. Yes, yes, yes. We have had a good uh, interaction, which we can build on. Mm. Uh, he, I'm, I'm sure he, he has said it before. He has learned a lot from the president here, mm. and uh, it's a good, it's a good way to pick up together. I think, mm. Mm. and with the others, to be able to promote, uh, to to promote the region. So something, something unique happened, and I don't know why why Sarah jumped it. Uh, when President Uhuru was elected. Uh, uh, he went to, to Tanzania mm. for the swearing in of President Magufuli. Magufuli. President Magufuli was a personal friend of Raila Odinga. <laughs> mm. Very close like this because they had been in the same ministries uh, and they were very close. Mm. So somehow, the two of them, the two principals went to Tanzania. President Uhuru as the president of Kenya, of Kenya. and uh, Honorable Raila Odinga as a special friend of the president. Mm. And it almost caused this diplomatic uh, embarrassment within Tanzania. Mm. I think uh, Honorable Raida has had uh, opportunities, but it, uh, it's, it's been difficult for him to make it through. Whether he would have made it better, East mm. Africa or not, now that he's not the president, mm. my hope is that the president who has come in will mm. be able to raise our, 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 our hopes uh, higher and that they can build further to the, on, on the community. Definitely, the good relations we have that he has with the president here and now uh, you know how much the president has been has been uh, uh, emphasizing uh, the federation. Yes. I am sure you, you, Uganda stands to benefit, and East Africa stand to benefit. Mm. But <clears throat> moving forward, uh, I, I, I want the Ugandans to have hope. You see, uh, when when it's, it's not, I, I, I don't belong to the school of thought that uh, if uh, ma, if the, we have uh, we are not able to uh, to get what we need in our home. Mm. then we, we may lose hope that maybe the, since the neighbor's child has all they need, mm. then for us we are doomed, we have a problem. Uh -uh. Mm. Our problems can be better. 
Mm. Either they may be better with the current parents we have, mm. or if the parents have not been able to solve the current challenges at home, especially financial mm. otherwise, mm. with the children, because we have had education, we might we can make it better. Mm. Uganda is working also, is working its journey mm. in uh, democracy, really. Mm. And uh, yes, you know, off, off the cameras, I was telling Sarah, we are better than many other countries. Mm. The there are, states. Many other countries. Mm. <laughs> there are also, there are countries that may be better than us. Mm. Eh? But we are better than many countries, mm. and it's not it's not it's not all uh, uh, finished. Mm. Uganda is, is is growing. We can we can we strength we continue strengthening mm. our institutions slowly by slowly, slowly by slowly. I'm sure there will be time when he, when he, we also don't see uh, uniformed people on the street. You see, it takes maturity in in elections. I I the, the, I, I repeat it again. There's much to learn from the Kenyan election. Mm. In twenty it's twenty seventeen. When they had a very when when they had the most, uh, it was twenty two zero seven. Mm. When they, they they came they fought because of disagreement on the results of the election, you know for like ten for like five days they would ask even the chairman of the electoral commission who won the election and he didn't know who won the election. But the military, you see, to to me in my own analysis, that was the best moment for the military to come in and say, hey, hold a minute, we can't allow such a statement in the country. We have taken over. Until when you sort yourselves, and of course taking over means they have now taken over. There, there will be no other hope for civilians. But the military kept in the barracks, and uh, the challenges happened. People went to ICC, and they were solved amicably. This time around, yeah, you would assume there's a stalemate. But you see, the incumbent, much as he has an, or, or a different candidate whom he supported, he has nothing to do except to prepare to leave. The incoming one. Yesterday, uh, uh, Dr. Ruto made a very nice comment. said, I have been waiting for the, for the call from the president, my friend, the president, to congratulate me, <laughs> but it is taking long to come. Therefore, this evening, after addressing the, the press, I'm going to call him. That was after <laughs> the day of the Supreme Court. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. After something. the Supreme Court declaration. He hmm. said, I'm going to ring him and uh, speak to him. We are friends. And also try to talk about the issues of the transition. You see, uh, yes, they're in charge. And the, they have a faith in the constitution. They have faith in the systems. Nobody fears mm. that anything can happen. Mm. So maybe Uganda can learn slowly. Mm. Uh, uh, it's not, it's not, not only the government to learn, mm. but even the, the actors, the different actors. Mm. Why, why would, for example, the military be on the street, like she's talking about, mm. on the day of election, after the election? Mm. It's because you don't want to give room for any unlikely, uh, 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 any unlikely upside. Mm. Because you see, uh, Sarah knows when we were much younger, we would say demonstrations are spontaneous. They mm -hmm. don't have to be planned. One, two, three people come put up something because they are dissatisfied with the results, mm -hmm. whether right or wrongly, ah, and mm -hmm. something gets out of out of proportion. Mm -hmm. If you are dissatisfied with the results, the procedure is go to court. Mm -hmm. But after voting, go home, wait for the results. Mm -hmm. You don't have to crowd around where. That's what Kenyans did. Mm. So if maybe the, our, our fellow Ugandans also learn that way, mm. go and vote after voting, go and go wait on. for the results. Yeah. Uh, yes, we may not have as many TVs mm. on which to wait for the results, but the radios are there. People are home waiting to hear. But you see, <clears throat> but you see, Honorable, but voters that, must that confidence, the county. That confidence, not, okay, eh, eh? that confidence must mm. be built. Why do you want to, it must be you, why do you want to promote openness? No, no, no. no. <laughs> At but, the polling station, also, yes, yes, everything yes. is done and finished. Yes. Yes. The winner is declared there. Yes. Yes. Don't interfere with the transmission of results. Mm. Now, if you have a good network and you hear many areas and you are not happy, you have lost, somehow action and reaction are equal and opposite, like you are mm. saying. You set up your own action. The, mm. the reaction may not be as good. We, we need to, to prepare ourselves mm. for both a win and a loss. And if it's a loss that has come, mm. we, we use the right methods mm. to, to challenge it. Yeah. But when we are there and the, there are people who can, hey, please, please, hey, hey, build up. Mm. The moment a demonstration starts or a, 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 an uprising starts, mm. it's difficult to control whether they have legitimate cause or, or not. not. And if there's a path through which you can address your legitimate cause, mm. then use it. Because why I wanted to ask is that you are urging Ugandans that when they go to cast their vote, mm. they should do so and go back home, for example. But I think that that is a matter of confidence. It's a matter of the citizens having confidence that these institutions will not attempt to usurp their will. Okay? Because I think that justice and fairness must, must, must not just be done, but be seen to be done. True. So if <clears throat> an institution does not warrant the confidence of the population, 
I think such actions by citizens are, are going to happen that I will cast my vote and I will wait to see what will happen because uh -huh. I have little faith in the institution. That has... That's not how it happens. Assuming we are at my polling station in Mwensa, by mm. we are like uh, 300 voters mm. in that polling station. We come and cast our votes. All of us can't have the same mind. Mm. That me, I'm going to cast mine and sit and wait. Mm. I don't trust those people. They may, they may read me out. No. Others will go back and dig. Vote. Others will go back and graze Actually, their cattle. Honorable, what mm. happens? People vote, go. Mm -hmm. They know voting closes at four. Uh -huh. And the counting starts. They come back They come four. and witness the counting. Yes. After, they go back home. Mm. So and so as one. At my polling station, so and so as one. Mm. So, president, so and so and MP, LC5, finished. Mm. Now, why, why would the people be... So where do they, where do they go? Celebrate from. Where no, no, they? you are complaining about... Uh, Give me an example where they gang up. Hmm? Where do they gang up beyond the county? Uh, no, no, you see... They, 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 they keep in the area <coughs> that, that, that has been gazetted for the polling to take place. They don't leave that area. No, where? They where has that... After announcing the winner at the polling station, they go. Where so have so they where the pro, Now, what is the problem, Sarah, then? If they announce the winner and they go back home, Having known what they you are after. saying, people crowd and stay around. No, no, I'm, I'm that responding happen? to your to your. Uh, um, the your, military your, deployment. Uh, yeah, huh. If the if the military is in Kampala, if they have not shot anyone. If they are walking and they have their guns, if I have done my counting and I know who has won in my polling station, I didn't even vote from Kampala because there are not many people vote from town. Where would the problem be? Yes, people may see and they get scared if they are not. But Ugandans are now very okay. Used to you were in Nairobi on voting. Yes. Were oh, yeah, was there military? They are they have they have different systems. They do they they, they, they are, there's no time when the military has been directly involved, directly for, for, for okay. supervised. Yeah, the, so it's good <clears throat> you confirm my earlier appointment that we are under government. No, no, no. Hmm. We are, our our democracy <laughs> is developing slowly. <laughs> the people, they are they are culture to accept the results mm. is is coming, is what is it developing slowly. Mm. In Kenya, somebody will vote, go and work, and they go and do me, the me, I think They will we, wait for where, results on the TV. Where I can vindicate Honorable Abbas's political party is on the argument that uh, Uganda's mi military being in Uganda's politics is not exactly an, an issue of the NRM. I, I don't think so. Because <clears> if you look at history, you look at the nine years under Idi Amin, you look at 1966 when when the military surrounded the, the, the National Assembly for you to pass the Pigeon Hall Constitution. I think that we have had this military, the, 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 this militarism the, in our politics the, the military for, government. for a very long time. And I think the NRM has a task to try to devoid or divorce the military from our politics. But, um, no, but I want to bring in doctor. On okay, before Dr. comes of, in, mm. the, the times the army has crashed with people is mm. when they are quitting uprisings. It's not that me, people are walking and, uh, and the meter is walking and then, hey, well, for, what are you doing? Here? You, see, you see, it's, uh, it's honorable, there is a civilian security force. Which, true. Which is the police. So has the police failed to quell to do that their uprising? Work. No, but it's not and, the, the and the second question. Yeah. Not the military. No, um, this is military I'm talking about. The mm -hmm. one which comes with the mag magazines tied on, the, on, the, on their chests. Um, uh, let me ask you a very specific question. Mm -hmm. In uh, the November 20... November 18th, 19th killings in 2020. I will point out to the three victims. In, in the three city? victims, yes, in Kampala. Mm -hmm. I know BBC documentary has done uh, investigation on uh, the three killings. Mm -hmm. But I want to bring just three examples. One is the first victim of killings, the, the lady who was taking food, the mm -hmm. food vendor. Mm -hmm. She took the first bullet and died on Kampala Road. Taking food for people in office, a, a single mother food vendor, carrying plates of food, short, she had nothing to do. So they looked for the, Wait, I'm coming. Mm -hmm. She had nothing to do with the protest. She was the first victim of those ex campus executions. She was not anywhere near the protest. She was carrying food, distributing food. Mm -mm. Sarah. No, I'm coming. Mm -hmm. um, I, let me bring my, my question. Mm -hmm. The second victim I want to point to your uh, your direction for response is the former lecture of EMI who was going to the ATM to withdraw money. And that one that, that, that one was killed on the second day, 19th, not 18th. And the other example I want to give you is, uh, may he rest in peace, the, the nephew of Honorable Bamonding, who was in P7, 
who had sent by the parents to buy airtime around the Kawembe, victims of Kampara executions. What role was you police see, or army doing? Sir, you call them executions. You, 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 don't, you don't juxtapose the situation properly as it is. What is the position and how were those people killed? No, no, no. I, 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 I don't have to, to, to know where and how and who was killed. But the situation you are talking about is a situation of querying crashes. Even those who are not part of the crashes accidentally end up being, ending them. That's why we, do, we, we would, as much as possible, prevent them, avoid them. Because the moment it takes off, now like when, na, na, when Chiseka market burns up, hmm. people are burning tires, they are burning what? People who end up even being arrested, short. some of them are not directly even involved. The planners, yeah, the collateral damage, the hmm. planners and the executioners of the wrong plans, they will even hide the one run away. Uh, the other time, they that's, beat, that's they, the they, let me ask you something. They beat up a woman who was putting on yellow on the street on Kampala. I'm sure you saw that video. What has she done? Does the element of proportional force apply to Ugandan security? Of course, there should be a uh, reasonable force applied to quell uh, a given situation. But if you can prevent the situation from happening, it is mm. better. So, but, so does killing people prevent the situation? No, killing means already it has, it has, it, it has, it has brought out so the So what force are the protesters using to warrant random shooting and killing people who are no, not no, even no. involved? Sarah, me and you would prefer that the uprisings don't even happen. If somebody is dissatisfied with something, use the proper methods available in the constitution to express your, uh, your, your, your dissatisfaction, your unhappiness. The election went bad, go to court and prove that it went bad. If the court says you are right, they were not. It then what happens again. to Article 19 on a rights protest and freedom to protest? Yeah, it's also, it's also guided. There are guidelines on how you protest. You don't wake up and go to second market, which is busy and everybody is there. Then you put a demonstration there. Not everybody is interested in your demonstration. When they say go to Koro, they say ah, they don't. They don't want to go to Koro. Go and sit in Koro and demonstrate. Let me and take your question. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yes, thank you. I was, I was just enjoying that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, doctor, just as we move towards the end of this show, the aspect of transition. When the people of Ghana eventually sent um, Joy Jerry Rawlings to his retirement, the arguments around transition and how it was handled. In your own view, in your own words, do you think the utterances made by President Uhuru Kenyatta, him not acknowledging the current president-elect, yes, I know he's a citizen and he has the right to his own opinion, but I, do you think that because he is not just any other citizen, he is the president, he's number one citizen of the country. So his opinions and, and views are not just any other opinion. So do you think that he is mismanaging the transition process with the way he's uttering all these there are, there are two issues here, in my view. One is that uh, the Kenyan illegal regime mm. has an organized framework for transition. Yeah. They, they have <clears throat> a law known as the Assumption of Office of the President Act 2012. Mm. That law lays out in detail mm. all the steps to be followed in a transition process. Mm. Immediately after announcement by Bomas of uh, Uhura as president-elect, mm. transition committee swung in place, mm. changed the security detail of Ruto from uh, that of the deputy president mm. to that of the president-elect. President mm. Yes, very true. Okay. The committee is chaired by the head of public service in Kenya, mm. and it's run purely by civil service. Mm. It is not, it has nothing to do with mm. what Uhuru thinks of what Uhuru okay. says. Mm. It's a law of Kenya, pure in the hands of civil service. Mm. Because civil service is permanent. Mm. It does not depend on elections. The head of uh, public service, who is also secretary of cabinet, oversees mm. this process. process. Mm. And it has been on since the announcement. Mm. So Uhuru has committed... One, he made his first public speech on elections after the Supreme Court decision, I think on the same day, in the evening. Mm. He congratulated all leaders that had been elected. And you can play that clip. You can only fault him for not singling out Uhuru, Ruto, <laughs> in the congratulatory <laughs> message. Say that again. You, uh, Uhuru, you no. can't. No, wait, I'm coming. I'm ca given. No, wait, I'm coming. <laughs> Uhuru yeah. said 
when he was concluding his short speech mm -hmm. on Monday, mm -hmm. I was watching live. Yes. I wish to congratulate mm. all elected leaders. Really? I'm coming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you can only blame him for not congratulating Ruto That's what is asking. in person. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm coming. Really? No, I'm coming. Okay, okay. I'm coming. Okay. I really, I'm not a spokesperson <laughs> of Uhuru. But I think we are over-criticizing him. Mm. Over, to me, things that are not significant. <clears throat> One, it is rare, even where the law exists. It is only insignificant. I'm coming. It is only insignificant no, 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 because I'm not... they have a strong legal framework. Yes, I'm coming. But if there are loopholes, a former head of state saying such things who would cause time with No, 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 cause... I'm coming, yeah. you know. That's why I said, you know, a democracy should mm. be should be Natural. vested mm. in institutions That's and right. civic competence of the people. Mm. A democracy cannot be at the mercy mm. of individuals. Yeah. And like Abraham Lincoln said, mm. if men were angels, then those would not exist. Yeah. So personally, I fault people based on violating laws and rightly so as a constitutional practitioner and, and, and a person who promotes constitutionalism. Mm -hmm. I don't want to fault people because of their emotions, because of their thoughts, we all have our individual moments. Mm -hmm. But what is the law and have you faulted it? That's where I come in. Mm -hmm. So when Uhuru Kenyatta, what I, I want to say that even in the, in the US, I, I remember when Obama painfully had the handover to, to Trump. Mm -hmm. Maybe in comparison, Obama called Trump yes. to, to congratulate him. No, yes. I'm coming. I'm, you know, it, okay. is, it is not a little no more that it's you must call. But you know, in a you know, you know, you know, the, the, the UK has no written constitution. They rely largely on conventions and practices. practices. So you want to bring a practice so, of, so, uh, of America. Can I make my point without okay. interference? Then you can interject. Mm. So uh, Obama, surprisingly, immediately, called Trump, congratulated him, and invited him for a meeting yes. on transition. Because that is their transition arrangement and democratic practice. Mm. I also want to underscore the fact that a good competitive democratic process mm. should produce an outcome mm. where there are proud winners <clears throat> that can celebrate their victory, but also with magnanimity. Mm to reach out to the people they've defeated, but also where losers can concede defeat. defeat. Mm. That is the ideal competitive democratic process mm. that every country would wish to, to, be, mm. to, to witness. In the Kenyan situation, you have a situation where transition arrangement does not include meetings with a president like the US. Mm. The US, you must have a meeting. The law does not specify, I've referred you to the law. I've read it uh, clause. The, the practice, I've read the law. The practice, no, the practice, but the, the practice is written where? It doesn't I've know. read the law clause by clause. It is called, and you can read it, all, all of you viewers. Mm. The Assumption of Office of the President Act, Act 2012. Mm. I've read it clause by clause. Mm. The Transition Committee must meet mm. the president elect. There is nowhere where they say a president must meet yes. a president elect. Mm. So you cannot say that Uhuru has faulted the law. The, law. Mm. the only crime we can blame Uhuru is to say, why haven't you called Uruto? Mm. Or why didn't you congratulate him as an individual mm. in that message? Yesterday I saw media reports that I, I didn't watch firsthand, where Uhuru said, I will hand over smoothly and uh, smiling, and become an ordinary citizen. And once I become an ordinary citizen, my leader is Raira. I will support him. Mm. I will do what mm. it takes to support his views. Mm. Because Raira will be the leader of mm. Azimio as opposition. <laughs> the leader of opposition. Okay. Yes, as the leader of opposition. Thank you, Doctor. Sir, yes. Thank you, Doctor. I, I, uh, honorable, <clears throat> just as you are prepared to give us that final comment, um, mm. on the day when the Supreme Court um, read this decision, mm. the Deputy President or President-elect 
had uh, a press briefing at his residence in Karen, mm. and he had this to say that, and I'll just try to paraphrase that, I will not do the handshake thing. Mm -hmm. I'll not try to, um, to forge a government that doesn't exist. I would rather have um, Right Honorable Raila Odinga being in the opposition and holding us accountable. So do you think that this is a democratically progressive means of how to run a government? That you don't need to compromise, you, you don't need to run a broad-based government exactly for you to be able to serve your people, that it is okay for someone to oppose you and hold you accountable rather than you trying to compromise them and bring them into government and therefore silencing their views. No, 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 uh, mm. Kidega, it's both democratic. Okay. If, if, if there are ways in which uh, you can accommodate uh, as many dissenting views as possible for peaceful progress of the country, it's good. Okay. If you can contain them, if you can have them better as opposition and mm. they help the government run, run, run well, it's as well welcome. Okay. Uh, well, uh, the details are, de they, they are details, but uh, I think if uh, Dr. Ruto was... Uh, was uh, flexible mm. to the to the handshake uh, arrangement. Mm. Even the the, high, the 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 court they wouldn't have waited up to the court mm. because after his win, many people were visiting him. Actually, I can tell you that he spoke with the writer. Mm. Uh, Doctor Ruto spoke. Well, he, he made a call to Raida and they talked. Even mm. the others he had stood with. He had stood with, mm. and they shared. When he came out actually open about that I spoke to my brother Raida mm. and uh, uh, I, I, I would be happy for him to take his position as the leader of opposition. Mm. I think if, if there had been other ways around it, mm. maybe even the Supreme Court. He would said have I would it. speak, I would speak to Raida. They had not spoken. I know they had, they had talked. They had, they had been t actually from the, the second day of, of the counting, mm. there had been a, a exchanges of phone calls. At least to the, to the detail I knew a bit. Mm. Uh, the, the current situation is not unique, really. But you see, yes, like Sarah said, there are personality issues. Mm. But of course, there is where you, 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 you must be, as, as, a, as, a, as a public person, not everything we, we, we do is, there, is necessarily in what we think, what we believe in. Uh, but sometimes you do things for the progress, for... for, 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 for if a person has one, it is, it is civil to say, hey, congratulations, especially mm. an old buddy, a, a, a good friend. Mm. But you see, uh, when they were in the campaigns, mm. they really, really had serious exchanges. Eh? Mm. Some of them are very hurtful. Mm. They had very bad exchanges in campaigns, and some of them were very hurtful. Mm. And sometimes you'd look at the campaign and you're like, hey, it's like it is Uhuru mm. versus Ruto, other than mm. uh, Raira versus Ruto. Yeah. When you look through some of those things, mm. and at one time, Dr. Ruto was saying... Because well, that's how uh, Ruto campaigned. No, no, no. Deep the, state, whatever. No, no, no. He actually... I think he focused on... Initially, I can be honest with you, Dr. Ruto kept away from attacking the president. I think he focused on... Issues. Until when it was inevitable, and he told him, of, please leave me alone, mm. let me do what I can, let me do my part, and two, don't shield this man from, from, from me. You give way. Just let, <laughs> let the man face me. This is what I want. When you achieve him, they work till the win. Kesho, as boy, takwat me maliza. Totally. So uh, somehow they are, they have had some some bruising mm. exchanges in mm. campus, and I think they are taking long to 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 get over them. Mm. But the flamboyant who he has been, me, I thought, ah. Oh, the campaigns are finished. But why do you will... like pretenders? No, no, no it's okay for someone to tell us. No, no, no. Leadership, leadership does not mean being a pretender. Democracy, and a democracy means no. you can even take what is not in your interest yes. just for the sake of progress. For the sake of progress. So you, when you when you speak publicly and you congratulate all leaders, really, mm. and you see you want to say that for you don't realize that there's a new president elected. Yeah. It, it takes time. Is then you read that? Yeah. And he's a leader, but he's the president. <laughs> yeah, I, he's the president. It it yeah. makes sense, but anyway, that's yeah. theirs. Yeah. It's, it's theirs. They are, there's a president. He's elected. He's going to. He, he will be sworn in. I agree with you. The presidential, the assumption of office committee, swung in action. They are managing invitations. They are managing the protocol. Mm. They are managing everything mm. that the function takes place. And after the function has taken place. The president elect will be able to okay, do thank his you. work. Finally, we doctor. wish Kenyans well. Yeah. Really, we congratulate them upon upon uh, the severity they have shown in the in the in the elections. Yeah. The campaigns were so uh, bruising. We mm. didn't know what would happen. Actually, many people thought that if Ruto wins, 
then Raila must be prime minister in yeah. order for the country to move together. Yeah. If Raila wins, then Ruto must be prime minister in order for the country to move yeah. together. One of them has won, and that's Ruto. Mm. Raila will be leader of opposition, opposition, and the country will move, we'll move forward. forward. But uniquely, the president has submitted himself to the opposition. To opposition. <laughs> because he's the chairman of us. He's the chairman. <laughs> but he was chairman. He's chairman Jubilee as well. Jubilee, 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 Jubilee which is an, an uh, scribing uh -huh. to us. Uh, no, he's chairman Jubilee, okay. and Saka, uh, was secretary general of, of Jubilee. <laughs> okay, Jubilee. Uh, to, just, just, just honorable. Finally, hmm. uh, doctor. Hmm. Do you, in your own words and view, do you think that the Ruto presidency offers a new paradigm shift in Kenya's political terrain, away from this whole dynasty, or you must be from this family to rise up, or you must be from this kind of background and heritage? Do you think his presidency offers an opportunity and hope for any Kenyan moving forward? You know, <coughs> one unique element that uh, happened during elections was a move from the ethnic base politicization. Mm -hmm. I, I think one achievement out of BBI mm -hmm. the, the, that was stopped by constitutional court is breaking that traditional politicking on ethnic lines. So Uhuru mm -hmm. with a few <coughs> like the Chikuyu elders who supported Azimio but the people voted for Kenya Kwanza mm -hmm. also helped to diffuse that because you have the Chikuyu voted for, voting for different people. Yeah. Also the same happened I think Uhuru's votes in Kisuma and that region increased mm -hmm. compared to mm -hmm. before because Raida's vote reduced mm -hmm. as compared mm -hmm. to before. So you had people taking a choice as who should govern them, mm. not because you share a tribe. Mm. Also, the other unique element that was in the election mm. is a, a seeming shared incumbents. Mm. Because Ruto is still a deputy president, deputy president with the official residence, with the security and office entitlement, mm. which he had throughout the campaign. And I, and I kept telling people <coughs> that this thing of a deep state is just a campaign <laughs> jargon. Mm. Because if you look at Ruto, he became a, a, a minister since 1999, and has been a minister since then. Mm. He has never missed any cabinet. So you are a minister for, these are how many years? About 20 what years? 21 to 23. 23 years. Yeah. You are a minister. Right from Moy, as Moy's young tax. Mm. Moy's young tax were the deep state, under Moy. And Ruto was there. So he comes... Since then, he has never mm. missed on any cabinet list. So I said, okay, but for campaign purposes, you can say different things. So I thought there was a bit of dishonesty there. And, uh, but when you come to his uh, campaign slogan, the Hasra Nation, mm. it was really a winner. Mm. Hasra Nation, departure from uh, dynasties, he won mm -hmm. the hearts of the youth. Mm. And I think that's what gave him uh, and the, 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 the undoing of Raira joining with Uhuru. Yeah, I think that's what gave me my marriage mm. as a candidate. Mm. So I, I, I think also, of course, political, the, the way you align your campaign information mm. is very important, especially in the digital era. Okay, thank you. Uh, so finally, we have come to the end of this show, but uh, mm. I would be courteous enough to give you each two minutes to give us your last words on the show, and then we can call it a day. I'll begin with the Honorable, then I'll end with Doctor. Well, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm happy that I have been part of this discussion. Uh, as as uh, we, we, we see Kenya settling in, uh, we hope we can, have a, we can have a better engagement. We can have a, you know, the Kenyan economy has always been uh, uh, ahead of the Ugandan economy. We hope there could be as many opportunities for Ugandans uh, through 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 Kenya as, as there can be to make you see we you we are interested we are following Kenya but why are we following why don't we follow Uganda and we stay here the the bigger the bigger the bigger region the bigger we would be happy if the region takes off if if the region goes to another level yeah that it can be to greater benefit to our to our people widen the investment base that we can attract uh, jobs for mm. our young people in this country yeah <clears throat> thank you doctor. Mm. Yeah, maybe building on to what uh, Honorable Abbas is saying, it's important to note that Kenya has 44.8% in middle income. 
whereas Uganda has 18.7% of the population in middle income. And the average score for middle income status by the African Development Bank in East Africa is 22.7%. So Kenya is way above economically in terms of the other countries, member states in East African community. And now it's good mm. that they are showing the way democratically. Yeah. We have a draft protocol on democracy and good governance, mm. which has been gathering dust at the East African Secretariat. I hope it can now be dusted and debated in line with clear examples from Kenya, because Kenya has showed us the way to go. I wish the president-elect and mm. all the elected leaders all the best in Kenya. I wish Kenyans the best. I hope Ugandans can put the lessons in practice. Okay, uh, well, thank you very much, Honorable. Thank you very much, Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> this, by all means, brings us to the end of the Citizens Chat Show for this week. We hope that you have enjoyed something. We hope that you have learned something in this conversation. But I think from us to you, we say have a lovely weekend. Enjoy your weekend and be blessed. See you next week, same time, same place. Bye-bye.